Mike Joy has been on the defensive since the season opening race at Daytona, when fans were in an uproar and voiced their frustration with Fox airing so many commercials throughout the broadcast. Some jokingly refer to it as the Commercial 500. Since Daytona, Joy has, on multiple occasions, informed the viewing audience about the upcoming commercials late in the race. On Sunday in Phoenix, the 73-year-old broadcaster changed it up, but not in a good way. When he first insulted a certain segment of fans before explaining what fans could expect in the next set of ads, his actions further confirmed that he's just part of the problem with Fox's NASCAR coverage and why fans regularly express frustration with the network. Mike Joy heard the audience's complaints about too many commercials at Daytona. Just read his Twitter timeline. He's responded to multiple remarks on the subject. Whether or not it's been from the direction of those higher up isn't known. But since that race, the veteran broadcaster has deliberately gone out of his way to let fans know about the next set of commercials and sometimes including how it relates to what fans might expect for the remainder of the race. Here's what happened a few weeks ago at Las Vegas. 53 laps to go. We want to be back for you full screen with green flag pit stops. So we're going to take you Fox side by side with Larson leading by 1.2 over Denny Hamlin. Several minutes later, he provided more information before the next break. So with 38 laps to go, we're going to take our final side by side pit stop under green. With Kyle Larson leading Denny Hamlin now by 2.3 seconds. This week, with 85 laps to go at Phoenix, Joy again provided the audience with information about the upcoming commercial break. However, he insulted one specific segment of viewers before he did it. If they could, Hamlin to seventh there. Now, for all the keyboard warriors, I'm going to do this in words of one syllable. The last green flag full screen break of this race comes right now. Fans have been complaining about commercials for years. It's especially ramped up in the last few years with the growing popularity of Formula One in the U.S. and its commercial-free broadcast. While commercials have always been a part of the NASCAR television broadcast model, the numbers can be daunting when broken down. Take this past weekend's race at Phoenix, for example. In a race that lasted exactly three hours from the waving of the green flag to the checkered flag, fans had to sit through 19 commercial breaks, including four side-by-side, -side, that included a staggering 114 commercials that lasted for 47 minutes and 50 seconds, or over 26% of the race. Most problematic is fans watching at home missed 48 laps of green flag action. Those numbers are just part of why fans are so frustrated with Fox's NASCAR coverage. Another big reason for the elevated irritation levels is the production itself. There have been too many times to count during a race broadcast when it feels like the director is MIA, and it often happens when Joy and those in the broadcast booth are talking about one thing and the fans at home are seeing something completely different. Sunday's race in Phoenix provided another classic example of the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing. It happened with 45 laps to go during Fox's Crank It Up segment, where fans are encouraged to turn up the sound on their television as the broadcast focuses on the sounds of the racetrack, including the audio of cars whizzing by at almost 200 miles per hour. Except for this time, the segment started at the most inopportune time. Fans had been patiently watching for laps as Kevin Harvick closed the gap on the race leader, Kyle Larson. And just as it was blatantly obvious that it was about to happen, Joy announced the segment, which then cut away to showing cars zooming by on various areas of the track. Fortunately, fans didn't completely miss it. The network cut back to when Harvick was on the inside of Larson's left rear and showed the number four's in-car camera with the accompanying louder-than-normal audio as it made the pass. Clint Boyer, to his credit, interrupted the segment to describe to fans what was happening. It up. I'm cranking it up because the four car just made the pass for the lead. I haven't Go seen away. that done the whole time. Unbelievable. 
While it's undeniable the significant contributions Mike Joy has made as a broadcaster in covering NASCAR, including his work at more than 40 Daytona 500s, it's also undeniable that he's another reason fans have tired of Fox's lackluster coverage. Take the last two weeks. During last week's race at Las Vegas, Joy was oddly confused on the final pit stop when teams took two tires, including William Byron, which the Fox cameras showed in one of four boxes on screen along with Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, and Alex Bowman. Right, Willie B to the front. Was that that fuel only for Byron? Look how close this is. And this week at Phoenix, Joy made another obvious blunder at the end of the second stage and appropriately enough, going to a commercial break. Kyle Larson wins stage two by 1.2 seconds from William Byron. Kevin Harvick two and a half back. Brad Kozlowski three and a half back. Second time that Larson has won stage two at Phoenix. When he did in 2001, he won the race. 2001, Kyle Larson is 30. Based on Joy's statement, the 2021 Cup Series champion impressively won stage two in the race in Phoenix at the age of eight. Those are basic mistakes, mistakes that shouldn't be made, but unfortunately have become part and parcel of Fox's NASCAR coverage. Fans can expect loads of commercials, mistimed camera shots, and mistakes. In simple one-syllable words, Fans don't tune in and watch bad TV.